Today on Sailor Moon, a child falls from the sky. A kid who dresses like me, who looks like me, and even worse, says she's me. And if that isn't bad enough, she wants the silver crystal. Who is she? And who are the strangers from the Negaverse who follow her? You just stay right there, and I'll show you. Moon Podcast Escalation! My name is Jordan D. White. My name is Chris Sims, and this is Sailor Business, the podcast where we sit down with a friend each and every week and watch an episode of the classic 1992 Sailor Moon anime and talk about why it is that we love it so much. And this week, oh, it's a big one. It is a turning point for the show. Yeah. It's Aiden is doing spirit fingers (laughs) in excitement. (laughs) What, Uh, What is spirit fingers? Jordan, have you not seen Bring It On? I have not. Jordan. Jordan, really? <gasps> oh my god, no. I've never. Is Jordan. it good? Oh, it's yes. so good. I'm that sounds kind of shocking to me. <laughs> Bring it on is okay. All the Bring It On sequels are terrible. <laughs> I went on a podcast just to talk about my unironic love of Bring It On. I talked about it for like an hour and a half. Yeah, wow. which is uh the podcast called Into It with L Collins <laughs> that everybody should check out. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Uh a lot of our uh previous guests have been on that show. There's an episode with uh Juliet Khan talking about uh Steven Universe. There's an episode with uh Betty is on talking about Total Divas, <laughs> the <laughs> WWE reality show. Okay. Uh and Aiden's on talking about uh Bring It On. But Jordan, like you sh- you need to see Bring It On. It's a legitimately <laughs> it's great. great movie. It's about cheerleader yep yes okay. it is about cheerleading it's great don't watch any of the sequels though okay i mean i own all of the sequels oh wow in a box set that has stickers but they are not what you would call great movies or good movies okay welcome to bring it on business <laughs> yes we're gonna bring it on business uh no th- this is sailor business and today we are going to be watching episode 60 angel or devil the mysterious girl from the sky which is a big one and in order to watch that with us, you've already heard her voice. Uh, we've already gotten into conversations and identified her by name. <laughs> it is Aiden Sullivan. Welcome back to the show, Aiden. Hi. How are you? Hi, yeah, hanging in there. You doing good? I'm, I'm, I'm psyched to be here for this episode. I love this episode. <sighs> I, I think we're going to have some complicated feelings about this episode. Yeah. It's a turning point, and it's a major episode. And, I, and it's like, this is not one you can skip. No. Like if you are watching Sailor Moon at all, like you would like this is the one of the ones you have to. Oh, can you skip the entire Doom Tree saga? Yes. yes. <laughs> but can you? Yes. Yes. Nothing happens. Well, they get their memories back. Sure. I, yeah, it doesn't matter. So it does you, not matter. You, could you? I'm trying to think what would happen. So you watch the episode where they do, they all die and they come back to life, and you see her wake up in the morning and she's running late and they're like, "Yes, we've given her a new life." And then you jump to this. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense, but you can buy <laughs> No, but you know what, you know what else <laughs> okay, doesn't make right. sense? The, the Doom, Doom Tree saga. saga. Yeah. And it's... You can just be like, oh, okay, they got their memories back. Now, you know, what's his face and Usagi are together. I think there are episodes in the Doom Tree saga that are worth watching, but I think, like, overall, like, yeah, it is very skippable. It's <laughs> very fillery. All right. Yeah, you, you can't skip this one, though. It is, a, it is a big one. So we're going to be getting into that. Now, Aiden, this is your fourth appearance on Sailor Business, so mm-hmm. your history with Sailor Moon has been well covered. It has. So if anybody wants to hear that, they can check out your previous appearances. I just really, I use I use Sailor Moon to make out with people. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. That's my deal. It's a fact. It is. That's, that's <laughs> how my life got to this point. <laughs> Uh, but people can check that out. So instead of going through your history, I think we're going to do what we normally do and take some listener questions from uh, our friends on Twitter who follow at Sailor Business. Yeah, we've got lots and lots and lots of questions. Here's one from Ginny Otto. Question. Why is everyone so cool with cats being in public places? Anywhere they aren't allowed? Oh, I uh, think the second part is, is there anywhere they aren't allowed? <laughs> yeah, like, that. It, that's not... That's not as weird until you get to the part where they're like taking Luna and Artemis to the movies right, and right. like yeah, because like I've visited New York, I've seen bodega cats, like I've seen you know yeah, but they show up everywhere. They're and in have the... you seen 
jazz club cats? No, I have right. not. They're in jazz clubs. They're in movie studios. They're in they're in the school on a regular basis. But of all the things you could bring into, like, if I saw someone with like a cat just hanging out, I would I would be kind of weird out. But I don't. So like right now you have this paused on Usagi and her grandfather kissing, <laughs> and it's so you un- can't <laughs> tell from looking at him that he's that it's much older so, than her. He's like three feet taller than her. But that's just the way they and draw like, men. He, and has like a like a mustache. He does not. <laughs> he's, he's he's got, so, he's, his hair hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> he has a full beard. <laughs> He's so, like, it's so I think he's got a cell phone holster. It's so uncomfortable. It may, like, he's wearing pleated ass pants right now. <laughs> and she's so, and like, and I totally buy that Isagi's like so in love with him. And I totally buy that he's a weird creep. That he's a weird creep who didn't go, hey, we're just going to be friends until you, and for a while. Like, that's what he should do. Like, How I is that it. any like, less buy... creepy? How is that any no, less creepy? No, because... <laughs> Because they are Dustin Moon lovers, and I totally buy that they're Dustin Moon lovers. That doesn't mean they have to be Dustin Moon lovers when she's 14 and he's 65. Like, right. They can wait a few years. That's actually. They can, like, they can, like, wait until she, you know, matures and, like, actually becomes an adult and isn't a literal child. That, that's actually, you know what I mean? That's a song by the Vandals uh, called 14. <laughs> And the song is the song is literally a guy singing to his girlfriend about how much he loves her. And he's then the chorus is, but I can't make love to you because you're 14. <laughs> no. And I'm not I'm not talking about that whole like, oh, I'm going to wait until you're 18. You that's what it sounds look. like. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about wait until she matures into an adult, because I also think that 18 year old shouldn't be having sex at all. <laughs> still a teenager. I just Ken, wanna... vote, Ken vote can't drink. Yeah, that's not that's that, weird. that eighteen to twenty-one year old also should not also should be focusing on your studies. <laughs> okay, Amy. <laughs> oh, but by the way, just just gonna head this one off. If you are about to email or tweet to us about the age of consent in Japan, do not do that. I will literally murder. <laughs> do not do that. I will find you. I will track your IP, and I will murder you. Why is it fourteen? Because you're, you're a creep. <laughs> no, but it's even not. I'm joking. I'm like joking. people always say that. But it's actually not. Moving on. <laughs> All right. So, so she, so they're having a little cute say, moment, like, a romantic they, moment. They do have what could charitably be recall, called a romantic moment. But like Memoru, like the the kiss, like the the kissing pose. I am putting my hand on Aiden's face the way Memoru's hand is. This is this is the most this is the most awkward. Like he is like palming her face in a very <laughs> weird way. Uh, so. As they are kissing. Wait, suddenly... wait, wait, wait. No, before we get to that, I have something else I need to talk about. Oh, okay. Because it's something dumb about the kiss. Let's say, regardless of, because I think this doesn't matter, even if you don't like their relationship. Regardless of whether you think this is a romantic kiss that they're sharing or makes you want to barf, uh, what the Deke dub did is incredibly strange and incredibly dumb. Okay. Darian leans in to kiss her. He kisses her. And then while he is kissing her, he speaks aloud, saying... <laughs> Something to this effect. I, I, I don't have. I didn't write it down, but it's something to this effect. Um, Serena, have you been chewing that? <laughs> have you been chewing that really sticky bubble gum? Because I think I'm stuck. What? <laughs> what? Serena, have you been chewing that really <laughs> sticky bubble gum? Did they like? <laughs> Why would they do that? Did they think they needed to add like a little bit of comedic tension? Because like the next thing that happens is going to be like silly and funny. Yes. Like yeah. it's a like, why would they? Why would they interrupt <laughs> what is ostensibly supposed to be the romantic moment of the show? I don't know. Like, it was look, so this fight, Our feelings. We are supposed to like these two together. <laughs> yes. Like we're not supposed to think this is a bad idea. We do. Yeah, that's, that's so that weird. happens. I don't know why I, they would do that, but that's what they do. I like. Okay, look. We've talked about guests we want to have on the show. Sasha Banks, obviously. Mm -hmm. Any, like, any of the voice actors would be amazing. I would love to talk to someone who is in charge of, like, localizing and adapting this show. Like, who is making the decision about the rewrites? Like, I just want to talk about that weird process. Because there's so many questions. (coughs) Why cousins? Mm -hmm. Why, like, why this? Like, why any of this? No. So, okay. In the Japanese version, it's a very tender, romantic, yes. face-touching mm-hmm. moment. And in the uh, peak of, it's a ridiculous, stuck-together-by-bubblegum moment. 
Which doesn't even make sense. No. Uh, like, there's no bubblegum so strong that it can cement your faces together. <laughs> was, was somebody at Deke just, like, uncomfortable with the length of this kiss? It's a long it kiss. It go on quite a bit. It's a long kiss. But I think it's, that's, well, whatever. <laughs> it's a long kiss. So uh, they are kissing, and all of a sudden, from out of the sky, drops the Luna P. <laughs> Which, if you don't know what it is, it's a weird floating basketball Luna head. Yeah, they call it the Luna Ball in the Deek Dub, which I think makes a lot more sense. I don't know why it's called the Luna Ping. Uh, wait, it falls wait, and wait, bonks. wait, wait. Spoilers, I think I might remember. Oh, okay. Isn't it, is, isn't it Sailor Pluto? The Luna Ping? Yeah. Is it? It is. You're right. I think so. It is. It is. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's who's speaking to her through the Luna Ping. Oh, oh, so it's speaking to her through yes, it. It's not actually. Okay. I, thought like, I thought you were saying, oh, like, I do not remember yeah, yeah, Sailor goes, Pluto being transformed into a cat head. Luna P transformation <laughs> into Sailor Pluto. <laughs> yeah, okay. I meant, You're totally right. It is. Okay. Yeah, so right. that makes sense then. Okay. So the Luna P falls out of the sky and bonks Darian on the head. And then he gets like a sweat drop because he doesn't know what <laughs> just happened. Mark? And what then. this? And then there is a swirl of pink clouds in the sky, and from out of the sky falls Chibi Yusa, landing directly on Usagi's head and, and knocking her out of the kiss. Smooches the hell out of the mama room. Yeah, which ooh, I'm glad that's I, I'm glad it's not any weirder than it already is. I love this entrance so much. I love it because it's ridiculous. I love that a uh, I love that a five year old is stealing Mamaru from another child. <laughs> I love and then I love that the next thing that happens is this tiny child pulls a gun on Usagi. Yeah, let's, that is well, my favorite okay. moment of all of Sailor Moon. Let's slowly, go through this slowly, real quick. slowly. Yeah, it, it's it's a funny moment because Usagi gets a butt to the head. I mean, it's yes. pretty humorous. And is then imme- like looks up and goes, "Who's who's smooching Mamaru?" And is immediately jealous like before anything else happened she's immediately jealous of this child who very clearly like just fell on her yeah and then okay so this pink-haired girl falls out of the sky we see a key on her on her necklace that is not going to matter in this episode <laughs> oh, yeah, Usagi immediately yeah, gets jealous and then the intro of chibi Yusa is great like yeah. this next like three minutes mm-hmm. is fantastic because chibi Yusa like turns around Gives Usagi a withering look. <laughs> With, by the way, her red eyes. Yeah, red pupils. Yeah. Somebody do a, a, a Punnett square and tell me how you get, like, blue eyes, blonde hair, and brown eyes, black hair, gives you pink hair, red eyes. Oh, yeah. Spoiler alert. This is uh, Usagi and Mamoru's child from the future. Spoiler yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I guess spoilers. That's well, everybody spoiler. knows that, though, right? Well, well. Do you guys really do spoilers for a show that's no, been out for we don't. twenty uh, years? Look, we've, honey, I think we mentioned that on episode one. All right. Good. The the thing is, Usagi goes, "Who are you?" And Chibi Usagi turns around and goes, "I'm Usagi Tsukino." Yeah. And no, and first of all, nobody goes, "That's weird." That is my name. Yeah. They just go, "That's my hairstyle." Yeah. How dare you take my signature look? Which. Understand when I see I have I have red hair with a blonde streak in it, kind of like Rogue from X Men. And when I see someone walking down the street with a similar hairstyle, I immediately have my hackles up. I'm like, who's this bitch? How dare she? Uh, she is totally ripping off my look, but in a worse way, and I am offended. So I understand why these two why these two young ladies. I like how you think that, but even you were like, yeah, you know, like Rogue from the X Men. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You guys. I'm trying to decide, trying to find out if you guys are portraying this differently or if it's different in different versions. She doesn't say she's Usagi Tsukino. She says, "I'm Usagi." I'm Usagi. She says, "I'm Usagi." Okay, I guess, yeah. And then, and then she so goes, I guess she would be uh, Usagi Chibo. <laughs> oh, possibly. Usagi, Usagi the fourth. <laughs> so then she goes, "Yeah, and who are you? And why are you?" And and she and Chibi accuses regular of stealing her hairstyle. Yeah. To clarify, yes. okay, I just wanted to make sure it was clear. Chibi accuses Usagi of stealing her hairstyle. And I feel like in in the Deke version, doesn't she go, because I seem to remember this from when I was like 15, doesn't she go like, you know, hey, that's my hairstyle. And Chibi Usagi goes, it's my mom's hairstyle. Yes. Like, just yes. in case you didn't, like, in case, in case you don't quite get it yet. Absolutely. That does happen in the Deke dub. So, and so Usagi goes, no, this is my, I'm 
Usagi Tsukino. Like just hollers it. Yeah, she at calls everyone. she calls her hairstyle a Usagi Tsukino trademark. So, then this child goes, Oh, you're Usagi Tsukino? I'm going to murder yeah. you. Pulls out a 45, pulls out an automatic handgun. And puts it directly to Usagi's head. <laughs> Who? And it's amazing. Wait, now the part that makes no sense is, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure Usagi stood up. She yeah. fell down yes, onto the ground. Did. She stands back up, apparently sees this gun and hits the floor, which yeah. I yeah. guess is sensible if a child yeah. is waving a gun around. And members like, uh, and two years ago goes, move and she dies. <laughs> which is like raw as hell. I love it. Now, but here's she's the... Looking, and she's looking for the silver crystal. Yes. Which Usagi's like, I don't know what you're talking about. To, to, to Usagi's credit, yeah. she's like, you're just going to have to kill me. Yeah. Because I don't know what you're talking about. Meanwhile, Usagi knows exactly what the silver crystal is and has it on her. Yeah. It's all, like, it's visible. Yes. Like, <laughs> well, no, not on this outfit. Uh, yeah, not on yeah. this outfit. <laughs> Only now, when she goes to school. Right. But now, now okay, to, 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 to make sure we are aware of this, obviously, obviously, there's no gun in the deke dub. Just wanted to clarify that. Right. I was going to ask. No, what's she, the, she asks. They do? She just says out loud, like, give me the silver crystal. And she's like, what? What are you talking about? No. And then she just goes, all right, I have other ways of getting what i want again they like do the weird shit where they like reverse her falling from the sky like she just like <laughs> disappears like leaps away gone <laughs> See then. that's that's like somehow even weirder than this five-year-old pulling out a handgun <laughs> yeah. in japan in japan where guns are illegal uh so like by the way if there was ever a time for some motherfucker to throw a rose <laughs> this is it right yeah when someone has a gun to her head yeah like, this is the time to, like, knock somebody's hand away, right? right. No, remember, it was just, like, hanging back. Like, well, this this five-year-old with a gun said I shouldn't move, so. I, I guess Usagi's gonna die. Yeah. Miracle romance. So, but, like, this is a form of torture. Like, this is, this specifically, <laughs> hold, no, I'm serious. I Holding know. a gun to someone's head and making believe, like, telling them that they are going to die and then pulling the trigger and it being like and and then like it, it, it's a fake gun that is a form of torture like specifically banned like you cannot do that to prisoners of war the the, the part the with the it doesn't apply to crystal tokyo the no. punch of tokyo never signed that treaty is it does not give a shit the banned part must be the the shooting with the fake gun right like cuz you must be allowed to hold a gun to someone's head right i not when they're like not, not when they've already yeah. been not if they're prisoners of war yeah oh, okay Cool. So I mean, uh, let's well, mark yeah. that down as the first war crime yeah. <laughs> that she recently tried for at the end of Sailor Moon R. So, I mean, because here's the thing. She she comes off very different to me in the Japanese version than she does in the in the American. So, I mean, the character that I've been ranting about all this time is definitely 100% Rini and not Chibiusa, yes. which is not to say that I'm going to like Chibiusa. I don't know. But I'm just saying she's very different She because she, she's a lot more... <laughs> together she's a lot more conniving and she's a lot more serious like even just the tone of her voice when she's talking in, in the in the japanese sounds like so deadly serious whereas like the annoying little little girl voice that of the of the of the deke is worse i also like as we were watching these episodes i was like i love chibi usa here i love this episode i love i love that she's she's just the worst and i love that but like as the series progresses, she just becomes a regular five-year-old girl, and I don't like children. And like, there's, there's like a, I mean, I don't, I don't mind children. I like my, I like my friends as kids. Like, other, like I like being a good aunt. But like, five-year-olds kind of suck. Like, they're kind of, they're whiny. They're earmuffs, kid. Pathetic. They are. They're, they're children. <laughs> That's the whole point of children. So like. It it's probably says a lot about me that I like the, the sociopath character much more than I like well, the actual five-year-old character, but I do. I think what comes off, <laughs> what, what doesn't always come off well with Chibiusa in general and with Rini in particular, yeah. is her desperation. Like, mm. how scared she is. Yeah. Uh, which, why did they, like, why send her to do yeah. any of this? Like, but and, I, and it's not fair, like, it's not fair to the character of Rainy to be for me to be like, oh fucking kids. But like that is how, especially in the American version, which is the yes. one that obviously we all saw first, she just comes up as super whiny and not yeah. 
like you said, not like that desperation. Rini, Rini plays way worse than Chibiusa does. And like, yes. I'm not a huge fan of Chibiusa either, but like the one thing that Chibiusa does better and because of stuff like, like, you know, immediately pulling a gun on her future mother, <laughs> which uh, how's that plan supposed to work? <laughs> But she's a kid and she's desperate and she's scared and she doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. And when that when you finally kind of get to that breakdown that she has later in in Sailor Moon R, as opposed to American Sailor Moon, it, it plays a little better. But I feel like it's, there's something that I want to talk about when we get to the end of this episode. But, you know, the title asks Angel or Devil, the mysterious girl from the sky. And this episode leans real hard into Devil. Mm-hmm. Like. I don't know if we're supposed to like Rini or Chibusa in this episode, or or if we're supposed to think she's an annoyance. Like, are we supposed to be on her side or Usagi's side? And I think that's by design. I mean, that is the title of the episode, but I think it makes it. I think they lean real hard into making her confusing and angry. Yeah, uh, in a way that makes it hard to like her later. Um, but I do think she comes off better in the Japanese version than than in the American by far. So agreed. Okay, let's see. So where did we leave off? She Well, so she runs... Well, first of all, she shoots. Yeah. And then it turns out to be a, a toy pistol. But the sound effect is of a real gun. Yes. And, like, to the point where in the new dub... Like, he doesn't say it in the in the original Japanese, but in the new dub, memory goes, was, oh, it was a toy. Sounded real, though. Mm. <laughs> like, it definitely made a gunshot noise. Mm-hmm. And Usagi has a little flower dart on her forehead. And so then, Usagi, having just experienced a war crime, goes yeah. home. Oh, and by the way, everybody talks about Chibiusa's hair. Like, everybody's like, oh, yeah, you know, Odango's, that's my signature hairstyle. Nobody talks about the Luna P <laughs> and how it looks like Luna. Like, specific, like, it's not just a black cat. It's a black cat with a crescent moon on its head. Well, like, I mean, and it's a floating... Com- robotic companion yeah. also it's a floating <laughs> robot yes i mean that that would probably be the bigger issue for a lot of people but like no one talks about it but you know if if chibi jordan showed up and had a float like you would probably recognize your cat's head right in, oh yeah in, in floating sphere form little scapey pee so, some some phantasm shit <laughs> nobody mentions it like nobody ever mentions it luna doesn't mention it no it has a it has a a force field of uh disbelief around it i don't know (laughs) as as well it should uh so usagi goes home goes into her room and it has been trashed and she immediately like like it has been like trashed and searched (laughs) like it the apartment has been tossed uh and she immediately suspects shingo which uh, does not speak well to Shingo's relationship with Usagi and uh, yells at him for it. But then Shingo responds with, what the hell are you talking about? Which I think is pretty funny. Uh, and then Usagi notices that hiding behind Shingo is uh, Chibiusa. This little devil child. Little devil child. Giving her, the, giving her the hairy eyeball. The one you just shot her. Yeah, the one who shot her in the forehead her. with a gun. Yep, all true. Uh, who, who knows about the silver crystal. Yeah, yeah. For whatever reason. Uh, so she goes home and Mrs. Sukino tells Usagi that her cousin, Usagi, will be staying with us starting today. Oh, yeah, we, but we, first we get this little weird flashback of Usagi and Mamoru just like thinking about what just happened and being like, hmm, mm-hmm. that was very interesting. It's very it was strange. very weird that a girl fell from the sky. <laughs> it just is a really weird scene to me of just them being like, hmm, hmm, we'll have to, we'll have to sleep on this, I guess. <laughs> We want to want to jump jump into any conclusions. This episode so, yeah. has some great ex- Usagi explosions. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. She keeps freaking out from this point on for the rest Which, of the episode. She is freaking out. Well, yeah, because she's being gaslighted yes. by a child. By a child. Yes. Like yeah. she doesn't have a cousin. She's never had a cousin, and her family's like, "What are you talking about? We've always had a cousin. Here are all these photos of your cousin with us." And like the toy gun thing is like. Like, seems to me like something that a desperate child would do. Like, a desperate child would, you know, go, like, oh, you know, I'm going to pretend this is a real gun and, yeah. and you know, get some answers. This shit is a level of, of manipulation. Like, this is a level of crime <laughs> and manipulation. Like, she's falsifying records. She's brainwashing people. Like, yeah. this is, I mean, first of all, this has to come from the Luna Pay. Luna, like, Luna has got to be like, you need to tell them you're her cousin and yeah. also kill the neighbors. <laughs> like, 
there's some weird shit going on. Yeah. Uh, well, but yeah. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I mean, because yes, they, the first thing they do when Yusagi's like, we don't have a cousin, is they bring out the photos. They bring out a photo album of entirely real seeming pictures of yeah. of Rini and, and Yusagi hanging out together. Uh, and her family's like, oh yeah, she came for New Year's. Don't you remember that? It was great. And she's like, Yusagi's so mad. And it's and like, what, really, did like, she Photoshop these? Like, what, <laughs> what happened? How did these happen? And the worst part is... Chibi Uza's like, don't you remember Big Sis? Like, to- uh. Yeah, uh, like, it, like, and, and again, that makes it, like, that's so manipulative and annoying. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's it's sinister, manipulative, and also annoying. Yeah. And that makes it really, like, that makes it really hard to like Chibi Uza yep. for, like, the rest Ever. of the season. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, and also, like... And, and especially if you never get to the end of, of the Black Moon Clan stuff. Right, right. Like, if this is all you ever see of, of Chibi Uso, which for most American viewers it probably was, like, you never get to see any of this get resolved in a satisfactory way. And there are, like, when Chibi Uso, like, as as she progresses through the Black Moon Clan and she, and she, you know, you kind of, she has that, those, like, pathetic moments, so, you know, the moments where you're supposed to feel for her. But then, like, the, mo- like, Right after she'll do that, she'll do something like hit on Mamaru, or she'll do something, <laughs> yep. yeah, or she'll do something like really like psychotic and like manipulative. Like right after she does that, and so it's this really the way that they do Chibi Usa in the anime is really jarring. And there's a lot of whiplash, yeah. to it. Like there's a lot of wait, are we supposed to like her or not? Like angel or devil? Yeah. Like the questions in the title are not usually this hard to answer no and it's it's really frustrating too like as a viewer because you just you want to you know it's also like she is a five-year-old you know like even me who hates children whatever like you like i want to feel for this child who is alone but like it's re- like the show never no it doesn't you. it never really like eventually again there are moments it just where they makes cry, you think, it's just those moments it's not I it just makes you to. think that uh that future memoru and usagi are terrible parents which i do buy yeah 100 percent buy that Absolutely. So, so from wait, there, so, we well, cut to well, Usagi. Hold on, hold on. Because what happens is Usagi gets a slight bit of relief when she looks down at Luna and Luna shakes her head being like, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, Which is good to have, like, she has Luna so that she doesn't, she's not like, I need to check myself into a mental hospital <laughs> right now because I don't know what's going like, on. Like, how, like, this is not as horrible as Naru's life in general, but like how horrible for Usagi. What a horrible afternoon. Right. Uh, so then Usagi goes to bathe in the blood of virgins. No. To stay young. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that naked Usagi in a bath bombed bathtub is not in the deke version. You would be surprised that it is really? in the deke tub, but they, they've edited it. Now, here's the, here's the they, thing. They, do they put her in a towel? No. They make the water entirely opaque. Okay. The water is blood, man. No, <laughs> it is completely red. But the, although the weird part about that is not even that, it, because this is a weird, this is a weird scene in the original because yes. they just draw her naked and then yes. they just, and then she comes mostly out of the water and you see her boobs and she just doesn't have nipples. Yes. It's super awkward. Uh, awkward. And they do that scene too in the deep dub. They just add like, steam or something like it's like <laughs> there's like white out so it's like whited out so you can't see her, her breasts it's very strange i don't know why they would make that choice what a weird weird choice to make so uh then it looks and because it, it doesn't have to be a bath scene like this could have been anything no. first of all it's like he's been in this bathtub presumably for a while the bath bomb has taken effect <laughs> you know she she's chilling out luna's outside and it's like he's like just you know on a rant and then it it looks for all the world like Usagi farts and then and a little bubble that comes up it's like he's surprised and looks down and then she smells her own fart yes yeah then she sniffs why She's very up why does that happen why that is so does strange and then a child and a robotic floating cat head come out of the water and uh it's first of all Chibusa does not know how to wear a shower cap her hair is all kinds of out yeah and they fight in the bathtub, and Luna comes in and goes, eh, Sagi's not in any, like, real danger. Yeah, yeah. Luna gives up hard in this episode. <laughs> Luna's like, well, at least it doesn't seem like her life's in danger. And L- like, Luna's like, yeah, I'm not. I'm out. <laughs> I am done. 
checking out. Good night. <laughs> I am going to bed. Stay strong. <laughs> and then comes the cute part of the episode that you guys probably barf during. Uh, where no, Luna goes. Luna goes. It's very cute <laughs> for a young girl to have a crush. Yes. It's very cute. Go. Yeah, <laughs> Luna is like, well, try you know, try to relax. It'll be everything will be okay. And she's like, yeah, that's right. Man, when John loves me, yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh then like th- also luna never mentions the luna p even when luna gets hit by it nope right it, that thing attacks her so they start fighting in the middle of the night with chibusa crawling into usagi's shirt usagi's pajamas yes she's in her clothes she's not even under just under the covers she's in her clothes with her <laughs> and then shingo mama and papa show up and uh mama and papa are wearing like full-on like victorian night clothes <laughs> like dad has taken off his button down shirt and put on another button down shirt and mama has put on a dress so has and so is a... chibi look at chibi's outfit it's frilly and, then, and lacy and like with like like the you know like the like the collar the lacy collar and like she's yeah. wearing one ridiculous nightgown as well and then it's like aiden said like it's like we've all had that experience of you know a younger relative or someone like doing something and then lying about yeah. it and it makes you hate them Ugh. so like you know uh chibusa comes in the bedroom like where's a fucking silver crystal i'm gonna <laughs> kill you i'm gonna slit your fucking throat <laughs> and then he's like, he's like what the fuck get out of my bedroom you <laughs> you little monster and then all the family comes in and chibusa's like why are you mad at me big sis i don't want to love you uh, and it's like i hate it i like, hate it they they lean so hard into making her unlikable in this episode it's like really uh, insult for her in this episode in the deke was they call her i think it was in this scene yusaki calls her flamingo head <laughs> that's pretty good like. yeah that was pretty her, good. her odongos do look like her ponytails do look like a flamingo so we're not even we haven't even done a villain fight yeah we're not <laughs> even <laughs> Not halfway into the episode yet, no. So back at the Black Moon Clan, they're looking for Rabbit. Uh, They have not found her. Uh, So they call up, they Skype in with Wise Man, the great wizard. Who who, Queen Barrel works at ball. Yeah, he, he, like, I, I feel like it would have been a great reveal if Wise Man is actually Queen Barrel. Because he, like, you know, (laughs) his hands come out and he immediately starts working that crystal ball, swirling that energy. Uh, But that is not what is going to happen, sadly. Queen Barrel is, is mega dusted. Of course. So uh, he reveals that they want to destroy the despicable city of Crystal Tokyo. Uh, and for that, they need the silver crystal that's here in the Juban district. Later, we're going to get into some stuff with energy points and crystal points or whatever. But right now, they just need to find the silver crystal. And so Rubius says he will find and destroy Rabbit without fail. I'm going to murder a child. <laughs> Uh, so they're that's looking our at, break everybody so fan yourselves off so they're We're looking at round two they're looking at the picture of uh usagi and chibi and uh they have brought it to ray so that ray can do magic because that's her sight you know she's one quarter monster and she has psychic powers quarter monster psychic powers <laughs> so she does the rin kyoto shakai jin ritsu zai zen uh stuff and you know, cat cast into the flames and she's real she's real rude to usagi rude as hell <laughs> That's a rude ass thing to say to your friend. It is. She said, "Yeah, so, what the what she learns from looking at this photo is that kimono is way too nice for Yusagi." In the English version, she says, "Your ass is fat as hell in this kimono." No, she yes, does not. She, she yeah. says, "She says this kimono really makes your butt look big." Wow, like Ray. Yeah, Ray Hino. That's rude, Ray. Ray Quarter Monster Hino. That is you apologize a line. to your friend. My problematic fave. So, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, the other four you, scouts you, You're mad at us for not being nice to her, re- uh, listeners, yeah. listeners. Just, uh... I on. mean, again, to be fair, that is way harsher than this kimono is too nice for you. Yeah. Like, the, yeah, like, the English version, real, like, just went They hard. ramp it up. But, yeah, no, Ray can't find anything evil about the... About the... About the picture. Which is, you know, probably... That, that is foreshadowing that, you know... Yeah, she which is uh, not actually evil, just shitty. You know, just willing to poison. Just shitty. Just, just yeah, she's about to, to, you know, she's about to, uh, I don't even know what offensive thing to say about what she's about to do. It's pretty bad. So, Grandpa is just bringing the girl some treats. Some snacks. You know, like he does. In the in the original mm-hmm. Japanese, he says, uh, hi there, cutie. Yeah. But they again, they try to soften that in the new dub with he's like, oh, hey, little girl. <laughs> uh, I think he, I don't think make, he meant 
that kind of key. No, he, yeah, I, I, I don't think like, he did hey, either. But I, one? I feel like they they made the choice to not have him say hi there, cutie. Sure. So have we have we mentioned that uh, Chibi Usa can make the Luna P transform into anything she wants? No, we by she dribbling hasn't done it that like yet. a basketball. By dribbling it like a basketball. Well, she does happens. now. Right. This is it. That happens. She turns into a baby bottle. Also, Grandpa's not bothered by this. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> trick. Neat. And she That's starts. So nice. One time, I turned into a monkey monster. <laughs> and she doesn't even have to say what she wants to transform it in. She just apparently thinks it because, I mean, again, even if you look at it, you'd think, okay, that is milk. But she's going, she's adding it to the tea, and he's going, no, it doesn't need milk. It doesn't need milk. And she's what like, what is she going to say? Milk. Luna P transform into a baby bottle full of poison. Like that's weird, right? A baby bottle full of like you know, like roofies. Yeah, it's like, it's it's knockout drops. She yeah. slips them a Mickey. Oh, uh, Deke change. She doesn't uh, turn them into knockout drops, but they actually go further in the other direction. She she uh, makes this stuff and she's putting it in and and she says to Grandpa, if I get uh, something like if when I give this to someone, they'll believe anything I tell them. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, used to explain the whole situation. You can say, "Oh, she gave this milk to the family as well." Mm, okay, but in the in the Japanese, she just goes, "Oh no, this is a sedative." Yeah, this is this is a sedative. Yeah, this is morphine. Yeah, and then she, <laughs> she pops she pops the baby bottle into Grandpa's mouth, and he falls backwards immediately. She yes. goes, "No, this is this is a milk. This is a sedative." And then she takes the tray, and I and get, then she transforms, and then she transforms into Grandpa, which. Where does where is she getting all of these superpowers? I guess I don't, from the Luna P. Wait, like, hang on. Actually, I, does she transform into Grandpa, or does the Luna yes. P transform into Grandpa? The no. Luna P might transform into Grandpa, but it talks. Like it is. No, she transforms because Grandpa then transforms back into Chibiusa. Oh, does he? Yes. Okay. I thought. I, I thought. Last night, just me too. You. But we thought. We thought. I thought it was you know, Luna P. All right. Well, we'll look. We'll look. The math book shows up. <laughs> a good old math book uh, tells like because because uh, Ray. Tells Usagi that she's like, you're probably making this up. You're probably just looking for attention, which is like <laughs> so messed up, dude. Yeah. If you lived in the Juban district, if you were a sailor scout, what would someone have to tell you where you would not immediately believe it? <laughs> well, maybe people are right. abusing it all the time. Like we, you know, we talked about this uh, and then I were watching The Flash and it's like, yeah, if we lived in that world. And Jay Garrick showed up and said, hey, I'm the Flash from another dimension. Like, it's like, yes, that makes perfect sense. Yes. We fought a talking psychic super gorilla. Yeah. So at this point, oh, like, so yes, dumb. I fully believe you. I love I love it. The Flash is so fun. Do you not love Gorilla Grodd? Because I do. I watched every episode of The Flash and I just go, oh, God, it's so dumb. Although the most recent episode. I watched I it and go, oh, my God, this is so much fun. Because it is so dumb and comic booky. <laughs> oh, insult to comic books. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Jordan. Did you not know they have telepathic psychic super gorillas? No, in, that's uh, not. Comic- no, you're exactly right. It's not the telepathic that's super gorilla that is dumb. Like, it's the way they react to him that is just like really stupid. Oh yeah, true. Oh, yeah, true. yeah. Sure. <laughs> and, and also not to like like who they decide to not tell about the uh, oh, bear. Yeah. Nuts. It's everyone. Know, everyone can know about the Flash except for the person who Barry wants to make out with. Yes. Yes. Currently. At a uh, at any given point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah like what like how is somebody gonna look at sailor moon and say oh yeah this weird stuff that's happening to you you're pr- it's probably just stress really was it just stress when the two new students who came to our school turned out to be servants of a giant evil tree that was drinking energy <laughs> and we're sending card monsters after us was that just stress? what hey what about when all the local businesses turned out to be plots to put people in comas what about when millionaire doll enthusiast Max Field Stanton turned out to want to murder us? Mm-hmm. Why don't you go tell Naru she's just stressed? <laughs> oh, poor Naru. You, don't drag her into dick. it. You jerk. Well, you rat. don't worry about it. Somebody here has their priorities straight because Amy lets them know they should focus on the real job of a middle, middle school student. Studying. Studying for high school exams. Yeah. Thanks, Matt Book. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> And everybody goes. Ugh. I like Amy, but I don't like Amy. <laughs> she's a she's a stick in the mud. Like Amy's great, but she's like, uh, like in this, like she has really gone. She's leaning into it. She's leaning into her uh, her her one thing. Yes. Uh, now, now, how how does uh, how does Reenie know that Grandpa's a lech? <laughs> 
because she opens. Well, I just assume she just assumes because she opens the uh, the drugging them gambit with with pretending to be a lich. Oh, you girls are incredibly cute as always. Anybody want to go on a date? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, here's what I'll say in positive to Ray. Ray is it's pretty great her dismissive uh get out of here. Go go away, Grandpa. Go away. Okay, but like spoiler okay, spoiler warning, but like everyone ends up living forever, right? <laughs> the end of Sailor Moon, everyone ends up living in their, their best life and their perfect immortal bodies in Crystal Tokyo forever. Right? Sure. Does that mean grandpa? <laughs> Sure. Is Grandpa around in Crystal Tokyo? Does Rini know Grandpa? Maybe. Maybe that's why. You're right. There you go. Maybe so. Maybe she knows future Grandpa. I, Grandpa's a million years old. Like, let me die. Please, Usagi. I honestly love the animation of Ray dismissing him and just being like, get yes, out of here. Like get out of here. Hand <laughs> waving him. Go, 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 go. So uh, Usagi goes hard on the, uh, on bean. the bean paste buns. Her gluttony saves her. Her gluttony saves her. Because everybody else, uh, instead of going for the food, takes a drink, and then they are all knocked out. And I told Aiden last night, the amount of sedative you would have to give to knock out Makoto would kill Amy. <laughs> like, there is no way that the same dose can knock everyone out without there being some big consequences for for Minako and, uh, and Amy. <laughs> they, they do get knocked out by, like, a sip. They yes. go, like, dead. Not dead. <laughs> Unconscious, I mean. And then, yeah, then Grandpa comes back, very excited that everybody's... Uh, uh, no, it, it does turn into... Grandpa does turn into the Luna P. Okay, I was wrong. Yeah. Grandpa turns into the Luna P. And, uh, but uh, Sailor Moon is nowhere to be found because she was hiding. And this is probably the best part of the episode. She grabs... She grabs Rini like the child that she is and just puts her over her knee and smacks her butt like five times. Going like... <laughs> what, what are you doing here? Smack, smack. Just I mean, like I you say do to a child. Who, I say this is someone who is not a parent. I don't like. I don't believe in like spanking your children. Also, if your child pulls a gun on you and then tries to poison you, I'll, I'll give you a that's, pass on that that's, one. That's, that's spanking. <laughs> if your child is dabbling in chemicals, <laughs> then yeah, that's a spanking. So Chibi starts crying, obviously, because that's what happens when you hit your kid. They start crying. And she has crying powers! Just like her mom did well, in her mom's first appearance. Yes, slightly different which, one. Slightly different. Well, I didn't. I didn't get that until I didn't point it out. But yes, she has crying powers. Yeah. Yes, slightly, slightly. Um, I mean, no. no the reason I, I, I don't. It's not like I'm in favor of hitting children. <laughs> first of all, by the way, not in the dub. Uh, in the dub, they he, she just picks her up, and she has her hand up like she's gonna hit her, but they never actually show her hitting her. But but no, it, I just like it because it's that thing of just in the end, it's she's just a child. Like you can just grab a child. <laughs> like that's how it works. They're just children. Like you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. just a tiny little child. She just walks over and grabs her and goes, "Stop it! Just cut it out!" Yeah. But again, she is like she's scheming like an adult. Yes. yes. Oh yes. Like oh, yes. The, again, the toy gun thing. I buy as being a kid, like poisoning people so you can go through their shit is like, yeah, there's a lot of tonal whiplash. That's something that I wouldn't do. Yeah. Now, I think so. The thing that's giving her this power that you're talking about, I'm pretty sure it's the key, if I remember correctly. Is it? I'm, I think so. That's why I said the key is relevant earlier. I, I think that's how I remember. I think the key is the thing that's protecting her. Am I crazy? I thought she just like hulks out yeah, and her, and like, her moon powers activate. Yeah. She gets her, her crescent on her forehead. Yeah. Just like, just like Usagi did in yeah. the first. Ooh, all right, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just remember it wrong. Meanwhile, so, across town. Uh, this is great. Okay. <laughs> so they're trying to find Chibiusa. The Black Moon Clan is trying to find Chibiusa. So Cohen has just gone to a playground where there's a bunch of five-year-olds and is, or, is like bending down to look at everyone's forehead. And it's a great scene because, I mean, go if you don't know what Cohen looks like, if you don't know what Katsy looks like, go look her up. She is five feet of leg. She's five feet of leg. She's wearing a gigantic feathery tutu, a pink pinstriped bodysuit, and has like cat ears, cat ear hair. Yeah. And she's just like in this crowd of children. Uh, and, and also there are a couple attempting to look up her skirt for a very brief second. One's, one's got his finger up his nose. When you yeah. say attempting, it's not like it's difficult. <laughs> her skirt well, no, just but it's like, is up in the air. <laughs> yeah, there's no, but there's no like, there's nothing, just, there's no up under her yeah, skirt. It's no, like she's a wearing a bodysuit, like so yeah. It's a large belt, yeah. more than anything. It's a, like a foot-wide feathery belt. But I love that, I love this look 
of Cohen, like, just li- lifting up people's hair and looking at their foreheads and going, no, <laughs> not you, not you. <laughs> like, this is the Black Moon Clan's plan. <laughs> this is them scouring the Juban district. I feel like in uh, so so then she shows up at the at the temple like a second later. I feel like in these shots she looks like Marina Sirtis. <laughs> That's what she looks like to me. Who? Talking about Counselor Troy. Counselor Troy. I think she looks like Counselor Troy here. A little bit. I can see it. Drink. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk so about uh, matriarch Benezia. I love, I love Katzi's outfit so it's, much. It's a really it's so great good. Design. I want those shoes. I love the huge jewel on her forehead. I love her teleporting earrings. I love it all. It's all beautiful. Yeah, it's a great look. So while while Cohen is looking at the for all the children, uh, like the Chibiusa is crying so hard that it like creates an aurora borealis over the Hakawa shrine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the Katsy goes there and goes, "Oh, what's up, rabbit?" <laughs> like, which is funny because she recognizes her on sight. I guess because she sees the crescent. Yeah. But I, like, I was like, "Well, if you knew what she looked like, why are you messing with those <laughs> other kids?" But wait, wait. <sighs> Again, I just am forgetting. I thought that the 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 that's what I'm talking about. I thought that the like laser effect was because of the key. I thought that's like her being like. No, if she's in danger, like she's going to get taken home again. No, because later, that's what happens. It's like there's an episode where she gets left at school and she's really sad and she starts crying. And she, it's only when she is crying that that happens. Okay. Not the key. Yeah. Or maybe because of the key, maybe the key channels the powers, but it's definitely the crying is the is the impetus. Yeah, and it's the moon on her forehead that's shooting out the light. Yeah. So, I guess. <laughs> now, look. The visuals are weird. So Katsy tries to uh, shoot fire at Usagi and misses. And then if you're well, wondering... Kat, first Katsy introduced... Well, oh, Cohen sure. introduced herself as the youngest of the four Spectre sisters. And Usagi goes, the four Scarecrow sisters? <laughs> Which she's not like trying to burn her. Like she just... Like Usagi doesn't know words. <laughs> Maybe they sound similar in Japanese. Uh, and, and Cohen's response to that is, you're an eyesore. Uh, Which I love Cohen. She's great. Yeah, you'll die first. Now, I love Cohen's uh, action pose, too. Like her big, twisty, bouncy thing she yeah. does. It's great. Uh, she tries to, you're right, she tries to set Usagi on fire, sets Ray's manga collection on fire. Usagi immediately goes to put that out while a five-year-old is in danger in front of her. And if you were wondering if you would get upskirt shots of a little girl, congratulations. It's your lucky day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> For certain values of lucky, I guess. <laughs> I, and I love, I love Usagi then goes, I don't know who you are, but you seem evil. So in that case, and then transforms. <laughs> um, <laughs> tried to set Ray's manga collection on fire. <laughs> when In the Katsy version, in the Deke version, where they call her Katsy, they, they put in a lot of stuff. Now, I, maybe this becomes more obvious later, but like they put in a lot of stuff about like makeup and stuff. Like she's constantly talking about her makeup. And like, she doesn't do it constantly in this episode, but like when they get in the fight, like the big kind of turning point in the fight, and I wrote this down because it's so great, is that like Katsy gets knocked to the ground and then comes up and says, how dare you rub my fine face in the dirt? Die. <laughs> and then right. like the kind of the last thing we see of her in the episode is her like, like reapplying, her, reapplying eyeliner. her eyeliner. But she's OK. This is the thing that you guys won't get, uh, but she's actually reapplying eyeliner in her waterline. Which is uh, uncomfortable, and uh, it's a great effect, but it's definitely uncomfortable and definitely takes skill. And so I 100% understand why Katsu's so pissed. Because <laughs> that kind of look takes effort. It's, it's, I get it. I understand, Katsu. <laughs> yeah, so they get into a big fight. The fight is, is pretty basic. basic, except that uh, Usagi does try a moon halation, and uh, it is dodged. So it might be time for a new move upgrade. Hey. Is it dodged? Oh, I, I, for some reason I thought... Yeah, like, Katsy, like, actually gets out of the way of it. I mean, is the implication that no one else could have done that? <laughs> like well, she's... no, because they're not, they're not moon bubbles in place. Like, when you get hit with, with uh, mercury bubbles, you just kind of have to stand there looking around. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying the reason that it missed is because Amy's not here to... <laughs> exactly. So everyone has to use... So everyone uses... Sailor body attack, by the way, which is just oh. literally like jumping on her from a high place. Yes, that is the best. The fact that how, she how calls it out. Dirt. Uh, in, in Japanese, it's how dare you rub dirt on my face. And in the, the viz dub, it's how dare you rub dirt on my fine face, <laughs> which I like a little extra 
a little extra ego. So Katsy's getting ready, or Cohen is getting ready to shoot some fire at Usagi, and then a rose shows up. Evil flames of death are ugly and despicable. Uh, That's something people say. So then Tuxedo Mask shows up, and <sighs> this is still happening. I love those shoes. I love Katsy's shoes. So with the distraction provided by Tuxedo Mask, we try to get some moon halation. Doesn't work. Uh, Cohen bails. <laughs> Cohen's like, peace out, Sailor Scout. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's I'm still fine. watching the hellation happen. It takes a long time. Us too. <laughs> yeah, us too. The, no, yeah, but the, she hits the, her. Like, she hits her. She hits her. Does she hit her? I thought she dodged. No, I think she hits her and just didn't. Yeah, in fact, Sailor Moon's all happy. She goes, I, I did it. And I think nothing happens. No, she it's hard no, to she, 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 she dodges. Because the next time we see her, she's behind her. And then she teleports out. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's unclear, but okay. So Tuxedo Mask carries uh, Chibiusa back. And <laughs> it seems someone's after this child's life. <laughs> It thanks. Good. Thanks. thanks. Thanks, buddy. Bud. And then he call. falls in and love. And then with her. yeah. And then they they bond like in Twilight. <laughs> and then he has he has a little vision of Crystal Tokyo in the future. Yep, of the planet Krypton <laughs> from the 1978 Superman movie. He's not sure why. Tuxedo and mask. <laughs> Tuxedo mask. Huh? Huh? <laughs> what? Uh? Nothing. Sorry, I was. Uh... He feels he feels paternally towards this small child. Yeah, which which is how you should feel towards children. Yes! You should feel paternal towards children. And she thinks uh, that he's so warm, just like daddy. Yes, in case you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> in case we're not in case we're not there yet. And then you see, oh, Cassie uh, reapplying that, that lash line eyeliner and uh, calling Tuxedo a really smug bastard. Yeah, some real smug bastard calling himself <laughs> Tuxedo Mask, which is... Great. That's that's the next t-shirt. After we get the kind-headed girl genius and hot-headed psychic t-shirt, the next one's a real smug bastard. Oh, I see what you're talking about, about putting on her her, uh, her eye line. Yeah, that's, that looks painful. It, it is is uncomfortable. You kind of deal with it, though. So, in the end, Rini is sleeping in Usagi's bed, and Usagi is just like, oh, look, when she's asleep, she's not horribly annoying, and I almost feel like I might like her. And then yeah. they sleep. She's unconscious. Yeah, yeah. And then they both fall asleep and squish Luna... And you see that they both sleep in the same way, like mirror image to each other. Just in case you haven't got it. <laughs> the see, that's end. What, this is what I mean. Like, it's total, like, she literally just poisoned all the Sailor Scouts. And now it's yeah. like. Oh, by the way, we don't see the other Sailor Scouts for the rest of the episode. Yeah. Oh, they are yeah, still yeah. out. They're knocked out. And it's like, oh, she's a cute little girl. It's like, no, well, she also did this stuff. <laughs> I forgot about that. I forgot that we never yeah. see them again. That's pretty funny. Yeah, we do not like. Th they're dead. They're probably dead. They're probably Grandpa dead. and the other four scouts are like dying. Grandpa for sure, because Grandpa's dead. Yeah, because yeah. the sailor scouts just got a few drops in yeah. each of them. Grandpa he got the bottle. Yeah, and he's old. He's a, he's a dead he's in man. good shape though. He's half monkey demon. <laughs> No, he's uh, all monkey demon. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's all monkey demon. He's Gigi. He's he's all like Ray's quarter. De Ray might have survived. Ray, <laughs> Ray might have survived because she's quarter monster. Uh, but yeah, like that's that's the end of our episode with like okay, like this horrible child now. I love that episode. Uh, Jordan, I yeah. feel like we learned a lot from this episode. What were we supposed to learn? Do we have well, a Sailor Moon says we do? But I have some news about that uh okay i think it's a recycled one. Oh, okay. so let's listen to it I, I, it doesn't use any clips from this episode for sure let's listen to it and maybe you'll remember that we've heard it before uh here it is jealousy can be a terrible monster it can make a really nice person cruel and short-sighted everyone gets jealous sometimes because of something someone else owns like a brand new bike or because they're more popular or because they stole someone else's boyfriend the point is, you can't let it eat you alive. Right, there are too many other great things going on. So concentrate on them, and pretty soon, whatever you're so jealous about won't seem so important. So don't fall into the jealousy trap, Sailor Moon says. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely a recycled one. <laughs> I think I think that's from the uh, the Water Spirit episode. I think I think you might be right. Uh, but yeah, like, does that really have a lot to do with what we learned in this episode? What with <laughs> Well, Usagi being instantly jealous of a five-year-old being hugged by her yeah. 53-year-old boyfriend. I mean, that's what I'm guessing. See, that's the thing is we'll find out next episode if this is 
the start of a pattern of them going, ah, fuck this, or if this is just a one-off. Where I'm, and my guess would be what happened was they were like, well, what's the Sailor Moon says about this time? And they were like, well, obviously it's about jealousy because of the jealousy thing. And then somebody was like, didn't we do a jealousy one? Can we just use that again? Like, did it was it specific? Yeah, but do you think they? I think I think they literally forgot to do one. You think so? Because yeah, because like when have they ever let? Like, when would they not have just gone, oh, well, let's just make it about something else, like recycling or being good to your parents? Well, they made it like, about recycling by using the old one. Oh, good point. <laughs> Sorry. Aiden, we'll start with you. It's time for Sailor Business Says. What did you learn from this episode of Sailor Moon? Uh, five-year-olds are only uh, are only good when they're sleeping. <laughs> or when they're listening to this show. <laughs> Uh, Jordan, what did you learn from this episode? I well, I I legit learned about a, a, a war crime I was not aware of. But <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> my my little rain cloud. <laughs> That's a war crime. <laughs> That's an atrocity. <laughs> <laughs> Did you learn anything else, Jordan? Um, yeah, I also learned that you can <laughs> that you can threaten people's lives and drug them, and uh, they'll eventually just forgive you and think you're one of the crowd. I learned that if you're a kid and there's someone who has something you want, like a toy or a game, like say it's your mom or like an older sister, you can just tear up their room or poison them or pull a gun on them and demand it, and that's totally fine. Yep. Sailor Moon Sailor says... says <laughs> so yeah um this episode like i think it's a good episode i think it's a like a solid episode but man it is chibiusa is totally all over the map tonally and well and she never really that never changes yeah like i, I don't know that's probably everyone's problem with chibiusa probably yeah where it stems from anyway right she doesn't it, it's not that she never gets better she never gets consistent yeah and she always kind of stays like as a really annoying kid. Like if she if she grew into a child who we were supposed to have sympathy for, that would be one thing. But she just kind of continues to be ill behaved and terrible with like little pockets of sympathetic scenes. It's not it's not it's not great. She's not a great character. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're I think you're you're right. Like it's and she goes so hard into, but why are you being so mean to me? It's like, <laughs> you manipulative little asshole. Right. Like She's terrible. Look, she's cause terrible. Because she doesn't do enough stuff that's like way over the top to be like cartoonishly enjoyable, like in the scene with the, the pistol. Like instead they do stuff that like real children do that is really annoying. Mm-hmm. Like, like the lying. Like, yeah, like but at least but the thing about stealing. that is with those things, those children who do those things, you probably still love them. Like, because, again, you're talking about, like, your younger sibling who, you know. Makes... But, like, I'm sure there are parents who listen who are who are like, no, that's what children are. Like, they're really annoying. And then you love them. But, like, none of us are parents. So yeah, but no. also, like, that's just a child that showed up. Like, we, yeah. like, at this point, yeah, this we... I've spent as much time with Chibi Usa as Usagi has. This is the yes. dawn. This is the dawn of the of the of the yeah. uh, dawn summers. Yeah, yeah, totally ripped off, <laughs> like everything else in this show. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I, I, I don't. I guess. I guess. I, I really don't have a maternal bone in my body, so I I find it very. I find children very frustrating, and so I find maybe more realistic children, like child characters, I find them just as annoying. Chibi is is interesting because, you know, it's obvious. It's an obvious raising of the stakes. Right. And, and, you know, I think we talked about this where, you know, the first season is all about, you know, something from the past, something from the silver millennium uh, coming back. And this episode is like trying to make sure that the future is okay, Mm -hmm. and people coming from the future. Uh, And and that makes for an interesting contrast. And I feel like Chibi Usa, you know, as evidence of that is an interesting idea. But then she also kind of just is a permanent addition to the cast. Yeah. (laughs) So she comes and goes. I I, I don't think she's in for at least the rest of R. Yeah. Yes. She's at least around. She eventually becomes a sailor scout. Yeah. No, no, I know. I know. But I don't think I don't think she's there for for most of S. I don't think she's in most of S. I know she comes back for Super S, and I don't think she's around for Stars. I could be mistaken. I can't remember. Uh, As as people know, I've only seen up through R. Yep. So like for me, like uh, she is at least permanent for this season. (laughs) Sure. And how it works? (laughs) I mean, she's she's you know as permanent as Queen Beryl. 
She yes, yes, <laughs> she's, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. She she's more permanent than Moonlight Night. Yes. She's a regular so, cast yeah, I, addition for this season. Yeah. Yes. I, and and you know off and on after that. But you know like Dr. Pulaski. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, of course. Exactly. Exactly like Dr. Plask. Another show that ripped this off five years before it happened. Yeah. Unbelievable. Takeuchi makes, America takes. That's what I have to say about that. So yeah, that that's the end. I do I do think the episode is good. Um the I think it's great. The episode's okay. really good. It's well structured. It's really well animated too. This is a big step up from the from the last one. I really like R in general. I really like this this next arc. Uh of like figuring out who chibi usa is even if i don't even if i find chibi usa grading at times i think that the idea is great and i think that all the future stuff is great and i think i I actually i like mamoru a little bit more in this arc i like future mamoru is the worst yeah that's what i was gonna say but present mamoru is actually i can you know i like him a lot more in this arc than i have in the past so yeah. that does it. Uh, that does it for episode 60 of uh, Sailor Moon. Thanks for having me, guys. This is like really fun to be on. Oh, it's thank you pleasure. for coming back here. It's always, it's always nice to have you on. It's nice to talk to you. We should uh, mention so yeah, um, that does it. We should mention that uh, it is the end of the year. So we will probably uh, take a, a, a gentle break, a gentle holiday break, right? Take off uh, a little bit for uh uh, Christmas and New Year's. Uh, by the way, if you couldn't tell, this was our episode where we uh, uh, announced the winner of the fan fiction contest. Uh, so, congratulations to our winner, uh, Helen. Thank you so much for for your submission. It really uh, made us laugh, and we had a good time with it. Uh, but I do want to say to everyone else, thank you so much uh, for writing in. 